In this task, you'll complete the map design by adding a title, metadata, neat lines, adjusting line thicknesses for Alaska and Hawaii, and adjusting label sizes and placement. So first, I'm going to adjust the line thicknesses for Alaska and Hawaii. And I've got Inkscape open here with my colorful map of the USA SVG file. And to adjust the line thicknesses, First, I'm going to close this Align and Distribute panel. I've got my uh, Layers panel open here. And I open that by clicking on the View Layers button. And I'm going to select the Alaska layer. And you can see that it's selected up here and down in this information panel. It's also identified as the current layer. Then I'm going to use my Select button, Select Alaska, and then click this Edit tool, Edit Objects. This opens up the Fill and Stroke panel and I'll click stroke style and I'll change the width to 1.417 and click enter and you see the stroke or the outline of the Alaska layer become bolder to match the rest of the lower 48. I'll repeat that for Hawaii so I'll select the Hawaii layer and again make the stroke style 1.417 and click enter to accept. Next, I'll need to change the placement of labels for several states. For example, Idaho, a lot of the New England states, and even labels like Missouri, it's offset a little bit. So I'll change them so they're more centrally placed and easier to read. So to accomplish this, I'll need to ungroup the lower 48 so I can manipulate the individual label objects. So I'm going to close my fill and stroke panel. I'll select the lower 48 as the active layer. Select it on the composition view. And I'll click this ungroup selected groups button. And I may have to click this multiple times until everything's ungrouped. So I'll continue to click it until I see handles around the individual labels and ellipses. Okay, there I go. I had to click it four or five times. Now I've got selected objects for my ellipses and state labels. I'm going to click the Escape key to unselect all these objects. Now I'll use this Zoom tool, and I'll zoom into New England. Some of the labels are overlapping or too close to each other, so I'll separate them for readability. So I'm going to grab the Select and Transform Objects tool, hold down the Shift key, and I'll drag a box around the New Hampshire label until both the ellipse and the label are selected, and then I'll click the Group Objects button. Now that the ellipse and the label are grouped as one object, I can use this Select tool to slide this into a better position. You'll repeat this process for other labels that need to be manipulated. With that taken care of, I'll click the Zoom to Page button, and zoom out to the rest of my composition, Okay, now that the labels for the lower 48 have been fixed, we can turn our attention towards labels for Alaska and Hawaii. They're quite small. The reason they're that small is because they were scaled down when we scaled down the imported PDF in Task 3. We'll change these labels to the appropriate size again. I'm going to show you two methods to accomplish this task. First, I'm going to zoom into Alaska. So I'm going to grab the Zoom tool, and I'll drag a box around Alaska. And just like I did with the lower 48, I'm going to have to ungroup Alaska. So I'm going to use a select tool to select the Alaska object, and I'll click the ungroup tool until I get the Alaska label and the ellipse showing up as their own separate objects. Okay, it took about four clicks, and now I've got the label and the ellipse showing up as selectable objects, and I'll click the escape button to unselect all those features. Next, I'm going to hit the shift key and drag a box with the select tool around Alaska and its ellipse, and I'm going to click the delete button to remove that from the composition. Next I'll click the zoom to fit page and window button and zoom back to my full extent, use the zoom tool, and I'm going to zoom into Louisiana. I'm going to select the Louisiana label and ellipse. So I held the shift key down and clicked on each till they were both selected, and I'll right click on those and choose duplicate. Duplicating creates a duplicate copy of the label and the ellipse and places them exactly on top of the existing ellipse and label. So with this label still selected, I'm going to zoom back to my full page, and I'll select this selected label and ellipse and move it over on top of Alaska. You can see there's still the original ellipse and label on Louisiana, and I've got the duplicated version over Alaska. But the label has disappeared behind Alaska. The reason this happened is because the duplicated object is still on the lower 48 layer, which is placed below the Alaska layer in your Layers panel. I'll need to move the duplicated label up to the Alaska layer so it's displayed correctly. With the label selected, I'll hold the Shift key and press the Page Up button on my keyboard until I get the selected object moved up to the Alaska layer. And now it's above the Alaska layer and I can see it on the composition. 
If you go too far, just hold the shift key and press the page down key. And you can also move the layers above and below using the layer menu on the menu bar right here. Switch to layer above, switch to layer below. If you unselected the label and it's hidden behind Alaska, just turn off the Alaska layer visibility over here in the layers panel and move the label to the Alaska layer and then turn the Alaska layer back on. So now I'll zoom into Alaska so I can work with this label. And unfortunately, the LA label that is duplicated is not actually editable text. It's considered a path object, which is drawn lines having no textual meaning. Therefore, I need to create a new text object and make it the same size as the LA symbol and change it to AK. So this will take a few steps. With the Alaska layer still active, I'll click the Create and Edit Objects tool over here on the tools bar and click just above my LA layer. This creates a new text object and I'll type LA and LA appears on the composition. So I'll select this and click text, text and font and the text and font panel opens and I'm going to set this to Arial and click apply and close. This is the font we use for the labels in QGIS. Now I want to align this LA text to my original LA text label. So I'm going to select the label and then select my new text object. I'm going to click the align button to open up the align and distribute panel. I'm going to use in this case first selected since I selected this first and I'm going to go ahead and click align bottom edge which aligns my text to the bottom edge of my original label and then I'll check align left edge. Now the origins of the labels are identical and now I just need to resize the text label, the larger one, to make it the same size as the path label, the smaller one. So I'll press the escape key to deselect everything. Then I'll select the LA text, the larger one, hold down the control button on my keyboard, and use the top right resize arrows to make the larger text the same size as the smaller text. Remember that holding down the control key maintains the aspect ratio of the resizing object. Now I'll reopen the text and font dialog. And I'll notice that the font is right around 14. Now we know which font size we're working with, and I'll set it an even 14. I'll click the text tab and change the text to AK, and hit apply and close. Now for the final positioning. I'll move the new text label off the ellipse. Well, as it turns out, I had actually selected the path label, which is fine. I can delete that. And now I'll put this text label exactly in the center of this ellipse. To do that, I'll select both the text label and the ellipse. I'm going to hold the shift key down and drag a box around them both. So I'm going to select the label first and then the ellipse. And then on my align and distribute, I'll select relative to last selected. And I'll select the center and the center align tools so that the text is now perfectly centered within the ellipse. I'll hit escape to unselect everything. And notice that the ends of the A and the K are touching the edges of the ellipse. We'll need to give this label just a little bit more breathing room, so let's make the ellipse slightly larger. I'll select the ellipse, and I'll hold down the shift key and drag a resize handle to make the ellipse slightly larger. Using the select key resizes the object about its centroid. Finally, I'll select both the text and the ellipse and group them and move the newly created label to a reasonable location in Alaska. So I'll drag a box around them both to select them, and I'll hit the Group Objects button. And then I'll slide this label just a little bit down so that it's centered within Alaska. And then I'll zoom out to my full extent. So that was quite a few steps to change something so small. After a few times, it becomes easier. But the reason I pulled you through all those steps is so you can get some practice with selections, grouping, layers, aligning, and resizing. These simple commands are quite commonly used and powerful when designing a map. Now we can try a second method to resize Hawaii's label that's much quicker but may not produce completely accurate results. So I'll zoom in close to Hawaii and select and ungroup the Hawaii multiple times until I see the selection boxes around the label and the ellipse. It takes about four times for me, and I'll click Escape to unselect everything. I'm going to select the Hawaii label and its ellipse. Then I'm going to zoom to Fit Page and Window. And one thing I meant to do before I zoomed out was actually group that selected Hawaii ellipse and label, and then press Escape to unselect them. So now those are grouped as one object. And with that done, I'm going to zoom into Indiana, and I'm going to select the Indiana label and ellipse. Now from the Edit menu, I'm going to choose Copy. Then I'll zoom back out, zoom back into Hawaii. I'll select the label and click Edit, 
paste and size. The Hawaii label is now the same size as the Indiana label. So let's discuss the downsides of doing this for a moment. First, we chose Indiana because it was roughly the same proportions as the Hawaii ellipse and label. Therefore, when it was scaled, the font size is very close and the label shouldn't be stretched unusually. Had we chosen California, for instance, you'd notice the stretching of the Hawaii label. So the previous long method that we used for Alaska is the safer choice, but this method will work in a pinch. Just check for consistency between like items when you use this method. Now I just need to move the Hawaii label so it's centered on the big island a little bit, and then I can zoom out to my full extent. Now I'll add a neat line around the entire map and neat lines around Alaska and Hawaii. So now we're getting somewhere. So I'm going to create a new layer and name it neat lines. So I'm going to close this align and distribute panel, and on my layers panel, I'll click this plus button to create a new layer, and I'll call it neat lines. And I'm going to keep this position above current and click add. And actually I meant neat lines to be the uppermost layer, so I'm going to click this, raise the current layer until it's on top of every layer. With the neat lines layer set as the active layer, I'll select the create rectangles tool on the toolbar and click and drag a box around the entire map and just inside the page border. A solid box will cover your, my entire map. And now I'll change the fill and line properties. So with the box still selected, I'll click the Edit Objects button to get the Fill and Stroke window to open up. And on the Fill tab, I'll click the No Paint button. On the Stroke and Paint tab, I'll set the RGB values to 0 and Alpha to 255. So I'll click Flat Color and use this default setting for the RGBs to be 0, 0, 0 and the alpha channel to be 255. This will make a black stroke that's fully opaque. Next on the Stroke Style tab, I'll set the width to 0 0.75 millimeters. This makes for a reasonably thick neat line. Now I'll align the neat line to the center of the page. So I'm going to open up the Align and Distribute panel. I'm going to click Relative to Page and click the Center on Vertical Axis button and center on horizontal axis button. If you need to, at this point, you can resize your neat line to include all the maps to avoid it from overlapping with the tail of Alaska, for example. And then realign as necessary. Next, we'll add a neat line around Alaska and Hawaii, and we can start with Alaska. So with the neat lines layer set as the active layer, I'll select the Create Rectangle tool and click and drag a box around Alaska, giving the state a little bit of breathing room. Now I can change the fill and line properties. With the box still selected, I'll click the Edit Objects button. And just to check, it has a fill of no paint, and it has the same 000255 stroke paint. And on the Stroke Style tab, I'm going to make this a little bit thinner. I'm going to set it to a width of 0.5 millimeters. And I'll click Enter. So making this line a little bit thinner gives the appearance of a hierarchy in the map. So we're making the interior neat lines quarter millimeter thinner than the main neat line. So now I'll work on aligning it. So I've got the Alaska neat line selected. Holding down the Shift key, I'll then select the main map neat line. I'll open the Align and Distribute panel, and I'll set this relative to last selected, since the map main neat line was the last one I selected. And I'll click the Align bottom button and the Align left button. And then I'll click Escape to deselect all my layers. Now I'll create a neat line around Hawaii. However, I won't create a boring square neat line. I'll create a neat line that follows Hawaii's shape and therefore won't crowd Texas on the map. So to do this, I'm going to use the Draw Bezier Curves tool. I'm going to click once to the right of Hawaii and along the main map's neat line. And then I'll hold down the control key on my keyboard and move my mouse and notice that the line rotates in 15 degree increments. This allows for nice straight diagonal line drawing. So using the control key and mouse clicks, I'm going to draw the neat line shown in the lab figure. So I'm going to draw first a straight line up to about here and click once. Then I'm going to take it up to about here, click, and then double click on my last point right up against the Alaska neat line. I'm going to use the fill and stroke panel to set Hawaii's neat line properties equal to those of Alaska's. So I'm going to close this Align and Distribute panel, and with this one selected, I'm going to set the Stroke Style to millimeters. I'm going to set it to 0 0.5, and that matches the Alaska neat line. Now I've got my Hawaii neat line selected. I'm going to use the Select tool, hold down the Shift key, and select 
the main map neat line and I'm going to align the Hawaii neat line to the main map. So I'm going to click on the align and distribute panel and since my main map neat line was the last one selected I'm going to snap to the last selected and I'm going to click this align bottom edge. So it'll align the bottom edge of my Hawaii neat line to the main map. Now I'll zoom in to the border between Alaska and Hawaii's neat lines and I'll just make sure that they look okay. You can slide the Hawaii neat line left and right with your arrow keys to make it line up with the Alaska line if it doesn't already. I'll hit escape to unselect everything and I'll zoom to the full extent of my composition. I'm going to close the align and distribute panel and the fill and stroke panel and on the layers panel I'm going to click the lock button for the neat lines layer. This will prevent us from accidentally selecting the neat lines as we place the title and metadata. So I'll start with the title. I'm going to create a new layer named Title and Metadata. So I'm going to click the Add button in the layers and call this Title. And in position, I'm going to put this above Current and click Add. So Title is my top layer. So if my title is the active layer, I'm going to click the Create and Edit Text Objects. And I'm going to click in this space where I want my title to go, above the lower 48 states but below my neat line. And I'll type in the following title, United States of America. Now I'm going to select this object and click the text, text and font, switch to the font tab. I'm going to scroll down to set the font to Arial and use a default size of 32 that it already chose. That's a good size for my title. So the title should be centered on the page, so instead of trying to figure out where center is, I'll use the Align and Distribute panel. So I've got my title selected, and I'm going to set it aligned to the page, and I'll use the Center button. And then you can use the Select tool to slide this north and south so that it's positioned where you want if it's not already. Now for the metadata. I'll make sure the title and metadata layer is still the active layer, and then again I'll click on the Create and Edit Text Objects tool. I'll click in this lower right hand corner. Let me slide this over so I can see my full map composition. So again I'll use this text tool and I'll click in the lower right hand corner and I'll type my name and the data source. So I'm going to open up the text, text and font tool. Again, set this to Arial with a font size of 10. It's much too large at 32. Then click Apply and Close. And I'll zoom to the full extent of my map. And I'll use the Select tool to move this object onto the map composition. With all this work done, I'm going to save my map document. And I'm done with my map. Now I just need to export it. I'll click File, Save a Copy. And in my Lab 3 data folder, I'm going to save this as a portable document format, PDF. I'll keep the colorful map of the USA name and click Save. And I'll take the default on the portable document format dialog and click OK. So in this lab, you've learned how to use Inkscape to import PDFs, modify objects in those PDFs, create new layers, draw new objects and add text, and export the composition. So while this lab was long and at times tedious, the design skills and concepts are very common when designing maps and do transfer over to other software packages. Going forward in the lab series in this course, and hopefully in your professional career, you'll continue to utilize Inkscape to design two more maps beyond what QGIS could do alone.